Well, God bless you. This is Sunday Night Live with Bishop Jerry Maynard, and I'm glad to come to you each Sunday at the six o'clock to talk to you about things that affect the faith-based community as well as our secular community, because we do understand that we work together to impact the lives of people so that we might be able to enhance their lives. And we have no particular uh, place in which we go, but we go everywhere so that we can impact the lives of people from different perspectives. And so I'm glad to be with you and I'm glad that you're joining us tonight. And we have a very special guest with us tonight who works in different capacities, not only here at our church, but also at Fisk University. And he's going to join us and we're gonna to talk to him about things that he's doing and, and how he's working uh, and doing things. He has done an excellent job of communicating with people and involving people and causing people to understand who they are and why they are and what God expects them to do with what God has blessed them. So I'm happy to have the elder Exum Lawson with us tonight, and he's going to talk to you just a minute about who he is and what he does. Elder Lawson, it's so good to have you with us. Bishop Maynard, it's a pleasure and an honor to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you so much. And I, I mentioned all the things that, that you do, and some of what you do is because of how you have been uh, trained or reared. And you even wrote a, a book uh, <laughs> concerning uh, some of those things that have to shape your life. And so before we get into all the things that Fisk and evangelism, perhaps we can talk concerning the book. Why don't you talk to the people concerning that? Thank you. Uh, the Lord inspired me to write a book. It is entitled Hashtag Fatherhood. I love being a father. And it took about three years to bring to flourishing, to manifestation. It started out as tweets uh, to uh, my children, uh, various messages on how I felt about some of the things they were doing, uh, some of the decisions they were making. And after over a year of tweeting every day on various topics and subjects, the Lord allowed me to put it into a book with the help of a True Vine publishing company, Timothy Bond. And uh, I really appreciate him and Adrian Davis. Okay. Well, tell us a little bit about the book. Okay. The book is a uh, affirmations. And uh, for example, I'm on page 163. And it's written for everyday uh, usage. And so on day 143, it just particularly says, as your father, believe me when I say, God wants to move you forward and higher, not lower and down. I love being a father. And just under that, uh, any individual has an opportunity to write their personal notes of a reflection, anything they want to talk about on that day. And on the bottom, I have what's called the wisdom of it. And the wisdom of it explains uh, what it is I, I wrote. And so it says, I always want what's best for you, and so does God. The advice I give you from time to time is a reflection of the advice I would give to myself. If it were me talking to me, hmm, in a way, it is me talking to me, isn't it? Smiling. And then it's backed up with scripture. And the scripture for this particular affirmation is 1 Kings 2 and 3. And observe what the Lord your God requi requires. Walk in obedience to him and keep his decrees and commandments his laws and regulations as written in the law of Moses. Do this so that you may prosper in all you do and wherever you go. And so those are just reminders from the things that I have written so that it sort of gives an extra uh, credence or, or accreditation to some of the things that I've written. Well, that's very good. Now, when, when you uh, look at yourself as a father, I am sure that you uh, have somewhat of a parallel uh, within your mind, uh, God, our Father, mm -hmm. and you, a Father, 
Uh, he is the father of the world, and you are the father of certain children uh, yes. who you have. And But the kind of energy that God spends for uh, the world, you have to expend that kind of energy for your family. And all of that then comes out of the love that you have. So mm -hmm. the question is, in this book, uh, you're writing out of the love because you obviously are thinking of your children uh, being involved in the world and you want them to be equally as successful or more successful than you. Uh, and, 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 and you're sort of paving the way with that book. Is that not correct? That, that's absolutely true, Bishop. Uh, I, I look at parenting, or I've come to look at parenting as a child, as being a child of God myself, uh, justice and mercy, uh, things that I want uh, out of my life, I can't do without God. And so uh, whenever I write something or I'm teaching something to them, I try to tie it in with how would God uh, speak to me? What would I want from God? So that as they, as they continue to uh, navigate life and make decisions, that they understand that that they too have to uh, look at life and look at situations as not just themselves alone, but themselves making a decision with God in the middle of it. Or as you always teach us, um, whatever, whenever you try to make a decision, include God in your decision before you make the decision or, or within the beginning of the process so that you don't end up in the middle of something and then having to call on God and then having to need God. Very good. And so when we look at where we are today, I think about our society, uh, we're having the economic problems, mm -hmm. uh, we're having racial problems, uh, we're having the uh, virus uh, here in, in Nashville and surrounding areas, we have the tornado, uh, the back to school or not back to school, in person or virtual schooling, all those things are going on right now. And so your children uh, are looking at you and they're seeing how you are handling these things. So let's say to you, uh, from uh, your understanding, how does your attitude impact uh, the attitude of your children? That's a great question. Uh, it's very important that I live for God and that I continue to lift God up. Uh, the, the examples that I have before me are my mother, Hattie Lawson, my father, Lee Lawson, and um, my wife, Regina Lawson, who helped inspire me to write this book. And of course, uh, you, my pastor, uh, you, you are the examples that I hold dear to me every day, no matter what is taking place. And one of the things that I'm reminded by looking at you all's strength in the Lord is that you all continue to stand strong for the Lord. That continues to inspire me to stand strong for the Lord, irrespective of what happens in the world, what is going on. And so having that kind of leadership around me and to pull from allows me to continue to stand strong for the Lord so that our children can continue to stand strong for the Lord because I will be the closest thing to them in terms of uh, uh, spiritual leadership and guidance. Very well, very well said. The question, another question I'd like to ask of you is that when you see uh, around you um, hatred coming from young people, hatred, I mean, these people in their teens, and, the, and you know, I think about the 17 year old recently uh, who left Illinois and went to Wisconsin, Kenosha, Wisconsin, and he shot two men. Um, and um, and and when you when you think when you think about that, uh, 17 years old, evidently, somebody is teaching something, but what they're teaching is not the right thing. So how do we, uh, as people of God, how do we get the message across that God is needed in 
our land. God is needed in the United States of America. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. That's an excellent question. And, and my hearts and thoughts and prayers go out to the families of, of everyone involved in uh, the senseless violence that we see taking place in, in our streets around the country. And you hit the nail on the head, teaching. Uh, one of the things that uh, Regina and I have tried to do with our children is teach the word of God, live the word of God, and uh, rear them uh, in the church so that they have a foundation of, of, of sacrifice when it comes to God. I believe that the truth must, uh, the scripture says that you, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And so uh, there is bad teaching taking place throughout our land. And those of us who, who know the truth, those of us whom have been made free, we have to continue to speak God's truth uh, in season and out of season. Uh, and just continue to, 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 to show by our, how we live our lives and the things that we do that God is in control, God is on the throne, and that at the end of the day, truth will always uh, win out. And that's what we have to do, remind them that truth will win out in the end. It may not always feel like it. It may not feel like it in this moment. It may not seem like it in this moment. But one thing that I enjoy uh, uh, reminding myself of is that the victory has already been won. Jesus Christ, through him, the victory has already been won. And because of that truth, it gives us comfort and peace that we must continue to just lift up the truth. Okay, so we continue to lift up the truth. Uh, and and in, in our society today, we have people on, as, as, as the famous words are, people on both sides, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, which the, the, the word is, uh, you know, we're all good, there's good everywhere. <laughs> and, uh, and so that being the case, how do we differentiate uh, from that which is rhetoric and that which is sound? Uh, those of us who are in church, we hear uh, the words, uh, speak thou the things of sound doctrine. That's what we hear soundness of thought and mind but there are people who don't go to church uh and and people we're not reaching virtually how do we reach these people because evidently the parents are not talking to them concerning these things so how do we in fact reach them by any means necessary i, I think that's a malcolm x quote and that is through technology through, I, I, God has blessed me and placed me in a very unique situation uh, and that I, I am the program director of a, of a radio station, 88.1 FM, here on the campus of Fisk University. And so I produce uh, several talk shows, one of them being What's the 411 with Sharon K. So those of us who, who are in Christ, God has placed each and every one of us in unique situations and positions to be able to speak his truth in ways in forms and in places that are not necessarily uh, within the church walls. And so even, even right now, this form right here, someone will share this form, someone, someone will share this message, and it will, be, it will go beyond the church walls. And someone who was not necessarily engaged in church on a regular basis may not even be a Christian, may, may listen to this message and glean something from this message that has uh, God's word and God's truth in it that can change their lives. Very good. I want to just talk about that since we're there at Fisk. You've been at Fisk now for how long? Uh, at this point, uh, 15 years. 15 years you've been at Fisk. Years. All the students who have come and gone, some of those students that we know of now are, are running companies and doing yes. things who pass through yes. and you you've had opportunity to interact with them and, on, uh, and, and doing the radio programming. Uh, you've had guests and you've been the host of many people. Yes. Uh, so Fisk University has afforded you the opportunity to impact the community. And what do you feel that you offer? Uh, I know you're a man of God, but so you offer Jesus, but what, in addition to Jesus, what do you offer uh, the people with whom you come in contact who you don't see, but you know they're out there listening? Yes. We, I, I would like to believe, Bishop, and that's an excellent question, that, that I offer them 
hope. I offer them a, 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 an ear to speak. Sometimes people will come to my office and just sit down and just, just talk, uh, whether it be students that just want to get things off their chest about professors, or about finances, or about whatever is going on in their lives. People in the community will stop by, or they used to before, uh, the, the restrictions due to COVID, but they will come by just to say, hi, hey, listen, I, I heard the show uh, with, with you and, and Sharon Kay on the other day, or I heard your gospel program, and I just want to say thank you. You know, I feel lifted up. Uh, it, we also give the uh, community an opportunity to have an outlet for uh, various programs that are taking place in the community. Uh, earlier, I believe we had you on after the um, uh, hurricane uh, was it the tornado that, that came through Nashville? And we talked about some of the things and some of the resources that Cathedral of Praise uh, had for the community. So we also serve as an outlet to get, inf to get information as well as news out to our people and the surrounding uh, uh, community because it's a, it's a benefit. I, I see what I do here, even from day one when I came here, I, I always saw what I was doing was God's work an opportunity to be a part of something bigger than myself. And so uh, this is just a, a, an extension of doing God's work. That's how I see it. Praise God. And so you, you impact people because one of the things that you have realized, I'm sure, that not only uh, does the station through you offer entertainment, but it offers education. Uh, it, it, it offers insight. Um, and things that people can utilize that will be helpful to them. Thus, the book that you have, uh, that you've written. Um, so I, I, I'm excited about what you're doing at Fisk University. Uh, I believe that you've even impacted the uh, male basketball team and the female basketball <laughs> team, and you had them come over. We were able to provide lunch. Well, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I think. Yes, uh, yes. We And that, that came through you. So interaction, we, we provided a service for them through you. So here again, you're not just a person who thinks about yourself, and you're not selfish. So let's, let's talk a little bit about how you stop being self-indulged. <laughs> how, how do you stop me, me, meaning the, a person? How you yourself, you Elder Lawson, oh, you stop okay, being okay. self-indulged because I'm sure oh. you had, I'm sure <laughs> that you you had goals and you had objectives, yes. but all the time was not just spent for you. You've obviously been working with other people. Yes, yes. Um, I think if I'm understanding the question correctly, it, it's a lot of it comes from uh, my mother and father. Uh, my mother was, uh, I grew up, I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York. And so as the story goes, my, my, my mother uh, is, is Pentecostal. She's from uh, North Carolina originally. My father, uh, Baptist, uh, he's from Selma, Alabama. And I went to a Baptist church every Sunday. I went to Catholic school on Monday through Friday. And so uh, I, I got a double dose of, 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 of Pentecostalism, that Baptist and Catholic all wrapped up in the one. But my, my mother was the head of the PTA on our block. And so my block, Spencer Street in Brooklyn, New York was a melting pot. Uh, I had Italian people who lived across, right next door to me. There were Jamaicans who lived across the street. There were uh, Puerto Rican people who lived across the street. So, and we all got along and we all knew one another. And my mother was the head of the In March on Forsyth County, Georgia. I was in high school at that time, and we ended up moving from New York to Athens, Georgia at that time. And so my father said, hey, listen, uh, would you like to go with me to, to this march? And so uh, I said yes, and we, we go to this march, and I end up standing right behind uh, Coretta Scott King, Hosea Williams, and so, some of these giants. I had no idea I knew who Coretta Scott King was. I didn't know who some of the other people were until much later. But just being a part of those things uh, just allowed me to just see myself uh, in a different light and understand that the world was a lot bigger than me and that there are times that you have to stand up and support things, uh, to support, support people who, who, who can use uh, your, your help or your voice just by being present. And so that's what I think uh, I, I got from, from my parents is just be present, be, be there, be, be a part of. 
Very good. Now, which then is a segue into uh, you've been over the evangelist department for yeah. uh, Cathedral of Praise. And uh, you've taken that. And some of the most outstanding evangelistic work that we have had at Cathedral of Praise came through you. At one time, you were working with uh, Pastor Pittman, who was uh, over evangelism at that time. And you, and when he, when I appointed him a pastor of a church, you came in right behind him and, and you've done an excellent job. So you've taken that from your experience uh, with your parents, your experience with Fisk, and, 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 and now your experience with Cathedral of Praise. Uh, tell us what, what, what keeps driving you to uh, <laughs> want to reach out to people and cause people's lives to change. Well, thank you for that. Uh, first and foremost, it's God. And uh, I, I do it all because I, I hear the voice of God and it feels, it, it, it really feels good within my soul and within my spirit whenever I connect with someone who does not know the Lord and I can say something to them and just watch them just begin to develop that hope, that godly hope. I mean, that, that is an awesome feeling. Uh, and, and, and secondly, uh, I, I'm, I'm a part of a ministry, a tremendous ministry, which you are the leader and pastor of that has taught me to maximize my potential. And every time I get the opportunity to read that on the wall of the church, maximize your potential, it always reminds me to maximize my potential. And I always, I, I never become complacent. I'm always asking God, what's next? What, what, what even now? as I look at the evangelism department and Cathedral of Praise in this new day, in this new era, I'll, I'll, I'll come to you. I'll say, Bishop, what are your desires? What would you like to see done? And then I'll say to God, okay, God, show me how to, to, to bring this into fruition. Is there anything that, that I can add to whatever it is that, that you have given uh, uh, Bishop Maynard as the vision for this ministry? And, it just, and, and, and once God gives me that, I try to run with it. Praise God. Now, one of the things that I've heard people say, they say, you know, uh, uh, Lawson, that's what they call you, Lawson. <laughs> Lawson is a good father, and uh, he's a good man of God in, in the church. And uh, then you have a, a wife, Regina, uh, who's with you, and uh, she, too, uh, is desirous of reaching out to people and helping people. That's just part of you all and part of your DNA. And so you, you, you're working uh, uh, in that regard. And I, I, I think it's great for people to know that your interest is not just in yourself, but your interest in, in, is in pleasing God. And the way you please God is by helping the people of God, Amen. whoever they may be. And I don't see you looking at certain groups of people uh, in a different way. Uh, a uh, higher echelon. I see you reaching people, period. And again, uh, speak to that, and then we're going to ask you another question, okay? Sure, sure. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I believe that, that there is no color, that there is there's nothing that should separate us as followers of Christ. Um, I do believe that each and every one of us carry our, um, for instance, it's, it's very obvious that I am a black man. So uh, if I may sort of segue, you know, I, 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 I look at how you preach your messages, especially in times of some civil unrest that we, we see taking place in our country. And we have uh, the words I choose here, we have uh, multiculturalism in our church and you, you teach us to, to reach out. But I'm also learning from you as you continue to uh, teach a message of self-awareness, godly righteousness, but at the same time, using the scriptures to remind us that this thus says the Lord. Yes, I'm a black man. Yes, I have issues and principles of that, that need to be addressed through social justice. But, as, but in, in addition to that, here's what God has to say to all of us. And I need that in my life so that I don't go too far to the left, too far to the right. And it allows me to feel very comfortable when I'm uh, speaking to people who are not black. 
and I could say, yes, come visit Cathedral of Praise. Come hear this man of God. And I don't have to worry that they'll be offended or that the message will, will, will uh, uh, they'll miss the message because they feel uncomfortable. And so being a part of a ministry like this uh, makes it that much more easy, if that's uh, in the street vernacular, that much more easy or, or easier. <laughs> all right, all right. That's very good. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to tell the people out there how they can get a hold of your book. I mean, it's a great book. I've read it. It's a good book, and I want people to get it. I want people to read it. Tell them how they can get a hold of your book. Thank you. You can go to my website, which is examlawson.com, X-U-A-M-L-A-W-S-O-N.com, examlawson.com. It is also available on Amazon Books as well. Okay, so you got two areas where you can go to and you can get the book. And, uh, and then, of course, uh, and when they go to either of those, they'll find out what the price is, I'm sure. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right, we'll leave it there so they can yes. find it out when they, when they, when they, when they go. Yes. All right, then they go to it. But it, it, will, be, it will be money well spent. And yes. we would like to uh, invite them all to uh, go there. And, uh, and, and get your book because there's good reading in it, not only as it relates to a father, but also as children are reading the book, it yes. will help them also. So yes. we appreciate the fact that you're with us on tonight and uh, it's great uh, to have you here on this uh, Sunday night live. And we appreciate all the things that you do for Christ and for the people of God. And even those persons who don't know God because you have shown yourself to be a person who is in touch uh, with the Lord. And for those of you who have been watching, thank you so very much for joining us uh, in this Sunday Night Live. And I want you to know that there is something that is extremely important for you, that we cannot be physically where you are, but through our virtual presence and through technology, don't ever feel that you are alone because we are where you are.